Hi, everybody, and welcome to Phys Ed Summit 3.0. I am Bill Bodie from Charlotte, North Carolina, and I teach high school physical education at the Performance Learning Center. So today, we want to welcome you uh, and thank you so much for joining the 24-hour back-to-back global event. We could not make this day happen without you, and just so humbled by the outpouring and support and the promotion of the summit from each and every one of you. By sharing with one person, you're able to impact hundreds of students. Thank you so much for being here to push best practices, effective physical education, and professional development forward. This is an amazing PE community, and we are so excited to be a part of it. Just one reminder that we are using technology, and sometimes things happen. So if for some reason, the video feed stops or something else happens, please check out the Tazel link for a new video link. It may take us a few minutes, uh, but we'll get it started as soon as we can. Thank you for your patience. And also, after the summit, could you please fill out the post-feedback survey uh, to the Phys Ed Summit 3.0 homepage? We hope that you'll provide us with some valuable feedback so that we can make 4.0 even better. Also, in order to receive your PD certificate, you'll need to fill out the quick survey after the summit. All right, so let's get started. Today we have Adam Laveau from Saudi Arabia, and he introduces his, himself in his video, so I will leave the personal part to him. Um, but today he is going to show you how you can use Autocrat, uh, Autocrat and Google Apps for Education to produce a praise postcard and send it to parents and students. What a great parent communication tool. It's easy and it's simple and once you've set it up straight from your device, it can be used with all age groups. So um, if you have time at the end, it will also uh, show you how he uses Docapender. Um, within his classes as well. So sit back and enjoy Adam Laveau's presentation. Okay, welcome to the Phys Ed Summit 3.0. My name is Adam Laveau, aka Mr. Adam PE, and I'm going to be talking about praise postcards today. So a little bit about me. I'm originally from England and taught there for a few years. Then I decided to go over to China and lived and worked in Shanghai. I'm currently living in Saudi Arabia at a great little school called Yambu International School, which is part of the International Schools Group. And we have seven schools part of our district. I blog out of mrrampe.com and I'm very fortunate to have just returned from an absolute amazing conference, which was the PE Institute, which was over in North Carolina in the States, where both myself, Nicholas Enlick, and Justin Slider presented a little session. I'll also present, be presenting a session at APEC, which is in Hong Kong in the middle of November. I'm also fortunate to have been part of the Phys Ed Summit, the first one, then the second one, and here I am for the biggest and biggest and greatest of them all so far, the Phys Ed Summit 3.0. And it's only going to get bigger and bigger from here. So what I'm going to talk to you today is about praise. So what is it? According to Google, we can't praise Chris enough. He did a brilliant job. It's to express a warm approval or admiration of. But looking at the use over time, we seem to have been lacking or a lot of us using praise a lot less over the years. So what does the research say? The power of praise in changing student behavior is that it both indicates teacher approval and informs a student about how the praised academic performance or behavior conforms to teacher expectations. As with any potential classroom reinforcer, praise has the ability to improve student academic or behavioural performance, but only if the student finds it reinforcing. So, praise postcards. 
what I'm going to do is show you using Google Apps for Education and putting both together. So where's this idea come from? So an old friend of mine, Sean Proctor, we met at Edge Hill University when we were doing our bachelor's degree. And Edge Hill is just outside Liverpool in a place called Ormskirk. And Sean's been doing some really amazing work with his praise postcards and he's been adding QR codes to them and getting parents to scan the QR code so that they can see their son or daughter's performance um, and why they've got that praise postcard. But what I was thinking is how can I do that but incorporate my Google Apps for Education stuff and really go use Google Drive and make my life a little bit easier rather than having a paper card and always sending them out. But if you haven't, if you don't follow Sean, definitely follow Sean and his uh, praise postcard mission. So here's what I want you to do. I've already set up a quick Google form for you. I'd like you to fill it out. I'd like you to tell me your name, your school name, the country you work in, and your email address, and your email address is really important, all right? You're gonna scan the QR code, and you've got two minutes. Okay, are you ready? Your two minutes starts now. Okay, don't forget to put your name, your school name, the country you work in, and most importantly, your email address. Vitally important. Remember, once you finish, you should have an email that's come through. Now make sure you've also done those 15 jumping jacks after you've submitted the form and check your email address for further instructions. Less than a minute left. If you've not already completed, come on, let's get moving. Remember, do the jumping jacks, straight after that you should have an email, so check that in box. Okay, so if you've not completed that yet, what I'd like you to do is just pause the video here and just complete the task that I've asked you to do. If you have, then check your inbox. You should have received an email from me and I'm going to move on. So what just happened? I didn't move. I didn't know what your email address was. I'm not that great at reading minds yet. But how did that magic just happen? So what I did was as soon as you submitted your email address, you allow me to use different parts of Google Drive and especially a Google add-on called Autocrat to be able to send you something. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna walk you through the part of Google Drive where we've now got a Google form, we're gonna have a template and how you can use this in your classes to produce praise postcards. Now as we're PE teachers, we need to move it. So let's do this. 10 seconds. Let's go. Okay, so here we are in our Phys Ed Summit 3.0 folder where I'm going to basically be keeping everything together. And in the email that you got, you should have received a link and that link will give you this Padlet. And as I am currently in the air, and I am actually flying back to Saudi, 
I'd love it if you could, if you have any questions or suggestions, leave them on here. I will get an email when you do leave your suggestion on here or question, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So that's the best way I can get for obviously us to have a two-way conversation and let's just see how people can use what we've been discussing today in your teaching day. So here are some templates that you could use. But what I really want to do is I want to take it all the way back and really start from scratch. So this is going to be our template for uh, our Phys Ed Summit 3.0 Praise Postcard. And we're going to use this to basically produce a praise postcard that could be emailed out to either the parent, the student, or even your secretary, uh, admin secretary, that can help you out send these to the appropriate people. I think this will be a great way of obviously just highlighting key successes within your lessons. And this could be used for any subject. So first of all, what we're gonna need to do is we need to decide what we're gonna say inside here. So I'm going to use a previous praise postcard. And copy it in here. Let's move this up a bit. All right, so as you can see, you can put anything in, but the key thing that you really do need to look at is what we have here. And inside it, these are the tags that our Google Form is going to use to pull information from. So for example, when we are filling in our Google Form, we're going to need to have, for example, the student's name, teacher's name, and you might have an email address on your Google Form. So all I've done there is could have gone from new, Google Doc, and then created a new Google Doc. So, second part of what we need to do is complete a brand new Google form. So if you're not familiar with Google Forms, you have the form settings at the top, which will give you different information. So I want as many people as possible to fill this in. So I'm gonna click this off. And basically what that's saying is you need to be part of the group or your school's group to be able to access this Google Form. You can suggest if you want to automatically collect the respondent's username. You can show the progress bar at the bottom of the form. We can do that. We can only allow one response per person. So if you only want them to put the information in once, or you can shuffle the question order. So we'll start off by giving our Google form a title. And in here, we want to change this just to text. First thing we're going to ask for is the student's name. And here, this is quite important. So if you make this a required question, before they can submit, they have to put some information in here. You can go to the advanced settings and go into a little bit more detail. So for example, you might only want a certain amount of characters in this box here. We're going to leave that as it is at the moment. We're going to ask for the teacher's name. And we're going to go from choose from a list this time. And we'll use Mr. Jones. And we will use. Miss Jones. And we'll go for a third one. We'll have Mr. Mr. Joe Blocks. Okay. And lastly, all we'll need is for us to be able to collect an email address. So you might want the teacher's email address, 
and then the form can be emailed to them or you might want the student's email address so this time what we're going to ask for is the student's email we'll also have that as a required question because with it being a required question then the form that we create can be then sent off to the student here at the bottom what we can do is we can fill a response so we can just say thank you for submitting and you can either show a link to submit another response or you can click that off so the Google form is only a one-time send but we're going to leave it switched on this time let's have a quick look at our form all right it's quite plain at the moment so we're just going to edit that up a little bit so we're going to go up here and click change theme then that will give you a choice of different themes that you can use for your form. So I'm going to go with this one. I'm going to click customize because I don't really like this border. What you can do in the customization is you can change the text, you can change the color, you can change the backgrounds. I'm just going to change the header. I'm going to upload a quick picture that's on my desktop. There we go. Great job. A little bit of praise for our praise postcard. Perfect. Let's have a look at our live form now. Awesome. That's looking perfect now so we can start to send this out if we need to and we can start to use this within our lessons. But now I need to start thinking about how am I going to use this information that I get and run the most important thing which is the autocrat. So I'm going to give you a quick demonstration and I'm actually going to use Sean as my student as it was his idea and teacher's name can be Mr Jones my student's email I'm going to use my email so that you can see that it does come through Now, if this was just a normal one, we would submit it. Thanks for submitting. We can submit another response, which we're going to do anyway. But now we're going to go into my Google folder. Down here gives me a list of responses. So here is the list of responses. And at the moment, there's no real magic happening. It's just collecting data. So what we need to do is go to an add-on. You're going to click get add-ons and then you're going to search for Autocrat. And as I've got, already got Autocrat installed, I don't need to add it, but here you would just click add. So Autocrat, we're going to launch Autocrat. I'm going to click new merge job and after a few seconds it will give us some more options. Now it gives you an option to create a table and we need these merge tags and this is what I was talking to you about, this is what I was talking about earlier. But we've already set up our template so we're just going to find the template that we've already created. This one. Okay. I'm going to name the merge job PPC for price postcard P Summit 3.0 PS3 actually. So in here now. Those tags, I'll see if I can pull it up. So these tags that we were talking about are now displayed here. Name, teacher's name. What we need to do is tell the autocrat where to find that information. So name will be student's name. Teacher's name, 
teacher's name. Now it's all lined up, we can click save. So how do you want to name the files once it's created them? I'm actually going to go student name, teacher name. I'm just going to command and C or control and C if you're on Windows and paste those into here. Or if you can't, if you want to, you can just copy them manually. PDF. And what I want to do is actually email it to the student's email. So I'm going to use this tag here, student email. And what that's saying is the student email that you've typed in, it will send it to that student email, which is a godsend. But it could also set up for the teacher's email, the parent's email, however you want to have it set up. We're going to say, thank you for being amazing. And in here, it's going to add our document. Please see the attachment. Both the amazing work. Okay. Now the last bit is in the advanced settings, which you just need to open, and you need to click on Run AutoCAD when new forms are submitted. That way, every time you submit a form, it will do it automatically. So it will email out automatically. You don't even need to be sat by the computer. If you don't click that one on then you will have to run the autocrat manually each time. So that will save you a lot of time. You can also decide that you might only want to run the autocrat and send your praise postcards or however you want to use it every day, which would be like 8 a.m. in the morning, every six hours, every four hours, every hour. So it depends what you want or how you want to have it set up. I'm going to save an autocrat when new forms are submitted. Save. And here we are. So what we can do is we can preview now with this first one that we've got. So here we go, it's incorporated his name and it's incorporated the teacher's name as well. So if you're not happy with the template though, and at the moment it doesn't look great, so what we can do is we can just click edit template. It will then take you in there into Google Docs and you can just edit it. Okay. All right, so let's see if this will work straight ahead so if I go in here and we're gonna say the student's name is now John Smith the teacher's name can be Miss Jones the student's email will be my email and I click submit just like before you could do your 10 jumping jacks your 15 jumping jacks but if we have a look in here there so you just saw it then flash up and you'll hear the little bing in a second that will say that the actual document's been emailed to me all right email sent and it'll just be coming through cyberspace and it'll keep doing that for everything that gets submitted now because we clicked on before there we go the automatic so if we go in here Please see the attachment, keep up the amazing work. John Smith, Miss Jones gave it, and here is our final PDF. And that can be your praise postcard, and you can set this up however you want to have it set up.
So here we go. So here's my mobile device. And what I can do now is I can go into my Google Drive. And I can find my PhysEd 3.0 folder. And in here, I now have the different parts that we've been using today. So, for example, if I want to use our PhysEd Praise Postcards, I can now look at this Google form. And it asks me, where do I want to open this item in? So, I really, I could open it in Chrome, and I really do like Chrome. But the advantage of opening it in Safari is it's a, a lot quicker and easier just to put it on your desktop. So I'm going to click Safari. And here is the one that I sent you earlier. Okay. So if we wanted to put that on our desktop, we could just add it to the home screen. And here it is. So now it's very quick and easy to get to. So for the one that we created, responses, and now open it in Safari. And this is the one that we were doing and we were putting the student's name in, we had the teacher's name. Okay, I want to put this on our my add to my home screen. I'm going to add this as praise postcard link. Add that to my home screen. I can then put that wherever I need to. So it's always there, and if I just need it very quickly when I'm teaching, okay, John, that was awesome. I'm going to send a praise postcard home for to your parents. You can load it straight up. John, teacher's name was Mr. Blogs today. Student email was my email. Click submit, done. Okay. And then if I want to send it for another kid, I can do exactly the same thing over again. And what that's doing now is it's creating the praise postcard. And then it will what it will do is email me the praise postcard. And I can then either print that out or I can send it to their homeroom teacher or I can send it to the admin secretary who will then send that home for me. So another way of just speeding up the process. Okay, let's go. Planking for 10 seconds. Let's do this. All about the brain boost. Okay, so while I'm in the middle of the air at around 30 odd thousand feet, if you've got any questions on the praise postcard stuff, I'd also like you to think about how you could use these um, in different ways. So, for example, you could use praise postcards, it could be for certificates, um, even just for filling forms out. So, I use AutoCAD to fill out my athletic packs and help me to collect the data that way. So, I'd love you to have a think. If you've got any questions, any suggestions, please add them to this Padlet and then we can have a great resource for other people to work with as well. Okay, welcome back to the second part of my presentation and I'm going to be talking to you now about Docapender. Docapender, what is it? So Docapender is a Google Forms add-on and if you don't follow Andrew Stillman, he's on Twitter at A Stillman and he's the brains behind this. And really what it is, it's basically a Facebook feed for both your students and the teacher so you can keep an ongoing record using Google Forms. So Docabender is using Google, but it's classed as an add-on, so you'd have to search for it uh, in the add-on store or just over Google if you were to type it in. So this year I've used it a couple of times, but two ways that I've actually put onto my blog 
is how we used it using fitness testing. So it was collecting fitness testing data. And I've also shown how you can use it to help write reflections in PE. And that's sort of how I'm going to show you how to use it today. So now I'm going to take you through a walkthrough on how it's how it can be used and how you can use it in your daily practice. So here you have my Google Drive and this is going to be my Doc Appender Drive. So I'm going to show you two ways of using it, whether it be through a student report or a class report. And for the student report, the best way I found on getting these student reports was to set up a template. So for each of my middle school, high school students, I have a template set up. Just very basic, just ask them for their first name, last name, age, grade. Here's my uh, Billy Jones, or my make-believe Billy Jones. And then I just leave it blank. And the way I distribute these is I have a complete blank template just like this and what I do is I send that out via Google Classroom but you could send it out via uh, Doctipus as well and if you're unsure on how to use those there is loads of really good tips and tricks on YouTube so check them out so what I do is I send them out via Google Classroom the blank template I ask the kids mm -hmm. to fill them in and then what they do is they then put that, uh, send that back to me, and then they're in their own folders. So what I've done now is I've made a, a make-believe one. And I've put that here in the Phys Ed Summit Doc Appender folder, because we're gonna need to know where we've saved those for later reference. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you an example for cricket. So this was a cricket exit ticket. And if you've been watching, Joe, especially Joe Bailey's session or any of the sessions that I've spoke about solo taxonomy, something that I've been trying to work with over the previous 12 months. And this is really just a, a little bit for a reflection piece. So at the moment, I'm going to delete that. Okay. So at the moment, we haven't got anything in the name category. And when you've set your Google form up, you're going to be wanting to get add-on and if you type into here docker appender and then just click install once it's installed it will be available here and you want to open the sidebar so we can now choose our target folder and what we're going to be choosing is the folder where the documents are that you want appending or you want adding to. So in our student reports, which is this one here, select. Then we click next. I recommend that you refresh this list. And what we're going to be wanting to do is put the name of the different reports into this Google Sheet. So when we click Save and Populate, you will see that in here, that's just extended, and it now gives us the option now of one of the physical education reports that we've made for old Billy Jones, which was this folder here. Click Next. Now, what information do we want going in there? So on the actual doc in here, what information do we want going in from this Google form? So we can have, we can have the timestamp, we can have the name of the student, but we've already got the name, so I'm not gonna put that in there. But I'm gonna have the ta leave the timestamp on so that we can see when the student did it. And then we want the information that we're collecting here to go on. Now there's different types um, of information and how it will look once it's separated and the best way of doing is to set this up and then have a play around with it. So a separated bulleted list is basically bullet points for each point. So each one of these questions 
would have its own separate bullet point. You can have um, it going across, so you can see it going across, or you can see it going down. Now, for me, the best way is the separate vertical table, because then you can read it as it's going across. Now, what you're going to do is click Save Changes. Right, that's ready to rock and roll now. So, what we'll do, we'll view the live form. So, if you can imagine the name, you're going to have all your kids' names all the way down here. And you will ask the kids just to find their own report. Click continue. Okay, so this was for a cricket session that we'd been doing. And up here, we're looking at batting. So, we have a quick look at what sort of competencies that the students got or what they think they've got as it's a self-reflection. So I'm going to say we're at Billy Jones, as I'm Billy Jones. I'm going to say I'm at the uni structural re session and I can identify and define how to retrieve a ball if prompted. So reflection of my learning, what are the key competencies? So for batting, I could make contact with the ball. To move to the next level, I look up here. Okay. To move to the next level, I'm going to need to know different batting strokes. So to understand and be able to perform different batting strokes. And then click submit. And then this is where the magic happens. So here's his report. And then there we go. So it automatically keeps an ongoing feed of the information that you put in from a Google form. So we can, you can ask the student to change this if you want to make it a little bit more pretty. You might want to change the color of the text. And that's all available for both parties to do. But by the end of the semester, by the end of the unit, by the end of the year, each student can have their own, own record of everything they've done that year. So a great way of incorporating Google Forms and Google Docs together. Now the other way I've used it this year is you might want to be able to do a complete class and then you'd be able to see the class. So I'm going to give you an example class here and it's going to be, for example, class 7B. We're just going to set it up exactly the same. So we've already installed Docapenda. Down here, delete that so you can see. Nothing in at the moment. So remember, you need to find the target doc folder. So target doc folder for this one is going to be a class report. So as long as you make sure that they are in the correct folder that it's looking for, everything should work out fine. So here we go, class report. Next, I'm going to refresh this list. I always recommend just refreshing so it understands what it's looking for. What class? Save and populate, and this should extend and give us the option that we want, which is the exit ticket for class 7B. And then remember, you just click in and off what information do you want to go on that document. So I want the timestamp, I want the class name. Hmm. Well, actually, just instead of time stamp, we'll have today's date and then the other information. Remember, you can pick here either bulleted vertical or single horizontal. I prefer the vertical. Save changes. Let's check this form out. So, if you were in a having doing this for a class, class would choose which class they're in. They could then type their name in. So. Joe Smith this time. Today's date would be 12. I think I am at which level for rugby? I'm going to go unistructural. The reason for that 
is I can pass a ball backwards because I only have one idea. To move to the next level, I need to understand different types of passing and be able to use these effectively. Change that. And then click submit. And this would be one sheet for our class. And there we go, there's Joe's exit ticket. And then you could have your whole class in the one document just for that one lesson. So you could see what they understand and then you could either print that or save it and use it as an ongoing feed just for your class as well. So there's two ways you can think about it. Okay, as with the praise postcards, I'm also set up a Padlet for the doc appender. Have a think about any questions or suggestions you might have and I'll definitely get back to you. And let's try and get a really good resource. So to access this, you can either access it here at the top using that or if you have your device with you, you can scan that QR code and it'll take you straight to it. Have a great day everyone and I hope you enjoy both sessions. See you later.